How exciting! I've got the photos back! From my photo size, uh, photographing and exercising around Sydney. may recall I was using old Kodak 200 ISO film that was supposed to be used and developed by 2006 and it's now 2020 so 14 odd years after it's used by date and actually the photographs have turned out quite well. The company that I used to develop the film and to digitize the film was Rewind Photo Labs. So rewindphotolab.com.au. The details will be in the description. I've only used them a couple of times, only discovered them the other day, and the results are really good. So the first roll of film that I shot, I developed um, and got them to scan them as uh, JPEG files, just in smaller file size. I think about 12 megapixel. And these ones I tried, uh, I got done in the highest quality they can do. And these were scanned at 35 megapixel as opposed to 12. And they were scanned as a TIFF file. File size is around 100 megabytes. Uh, the option was to J uh, scan them as JPEG files and then they would have only been about uh, uh, nine megabyte files or something like that. But anyway, so that's what we're gonna be comparing. And they also give you a proof sheet so that uh, you can actually see roughly what you got. Then, in addition to that, when they scan it, then they send it to a Dropbox and then you can actually download from the Dropbox onto your own computer. And that's what I've done. So just a reminder, I was shooting uh, photographs with two cameras. And uh, in some cases I took the same photograph with both cameras so that we can do a comparison and that's what we're going to be doing today in the video. Now, let's have a look at the photographs in more detail. The top row here is with the Leica M240 and the bottom row here is with the Leica, the old Leica M4 film camera. So these are digital copies of the film, color film, and these are the original digital JPEGs directly from the Leica M240. So we'll just compare these two photographs of the bike. There is more detail in the digital camera compared to shooting with the film. You can see all the grain. So with the TIFF file, there's been no smoothing done whatsoever. So basically what was on the negative is coming up here and we can actually see the detail of the grain here. With the JPEG coming out of the digital camera, the Leica digital camera, you can see there's actually a lot more detail there compared to the film. If we move to other areas of um, the photo and you can see there's actually more detail in the in the digital 24 megapixel camera. Also here in the seat, you can see the difference. So the point of this exercise isn't necessary to see which has got more detail, even though that's basically what we're seeing. It's just understanding the different aspects of digital versus film. And by understanding the different aspects of it, then you can use that to your own advantage when you're taking the photographs as far as what you want to portray. So here we look at the cobwebs here, we get quite a bit of detail in the digital photograph uh, from the M240. And then uh, shooting film, we don't quite have as much detail. So looking at these two photographs, what do we notice? Well, let's uh, zoom in and straight away we'll see some aspects here. So we'll look in the window here. We can actually see in the outline that there is some sort of a pot plant there and you can just see the uh, twigs and the branches and whatever. If we look at the film, yes, you can pick out the trunk here, but it's very hard to 
pick out the actual tree in the background. Look under the underside of the building here. We've got the detail. Actually, we've got a cobweb there. You can just see the cobweb. We've got some more detail here, and we're missing some of the detail here that the film. We've got quite a bit of a color difference between the digital shot, the digital camera, and the film camera. Um, you could spend some time to try and color match these, um, but again, I guess not really the purpose of the exercise this time. Let's just have a look at the detail. We we'll have a look at the sign. Uh, you can see we've got more detail in the sign using the digital camera versus the film camera. All right, so I think we could probably make a conclusion that at 24 megapixel, uh, we are recording more information than the 200 ASA film, the ISO film that we're using, the Kodak 200 ISO film. What's the conclusion out of this? Uh, these are tools. So they both have their pros and cons and they all produce certain results. If you understand the results uh, can be produced with film and the type of effects that you have, together, oh that's a film, uh, together with a digital, then you can create all sorts of wonderful artwork and be as creative as you possibly can be. Uh, it was fun shooting with the film because obviously you can't see results straight away. You take the shot, you think you got a certain thing, uh, after you've taken the shot, you you inevitably you, you check to see, did I have the right exposure? Did I have the right focus? Um, did I have the right shutter speeds? I don't get camera blur, blur and everything. And then you've got to wait until you get the results. So I was actually pleasantly surprised with some of the shots I got, particularly some of the street shots, uh, where I um, didn't really have any time. Uh, subjects walked into the frame and I was able to take the shot. Or in some cases, I had it set in the telephone booth to do... Uh, self timer and a couple extra people walked into the frame, but it made a great shot. So I really enjoyed using the film. I would really enjoy using the uh, digital as well. Both have their purposes. But it'd be interesting to get your view and your thoughts. Uh, have you used film cameras? Um, do you like using film? There is an expense associated with it. Obviously, shooting digital, you can see the results. You've already invested in the equipment to be able to see the results. Whenever you're shooting film, you have to pay someone to get it processed. The processing with the proof and the high quality TIFF files was about $40 Australian. Uh, if you were happy with the JPEG files at lower quality, you can get the whole lot done for about $16 or $17, including postage back to you. So that's a comparison, so there you go. I'll show you some of the photographs. I hope you enjoy. Remember, subscribe. Uh, it's really important. Uh, it supports me to be able to provide more of these videos for you as a viewer. Please like, that helps with uh, YouTube algorithms so that more and more people can actually view and, and enjoy the um, material. Do also leave comments, uh, that also helps in understanding what you like to see and what sort of uh, content that I create for Greenie Flicks YouTube channel.